wanted to give a overview and introduction into the OSGI tooling that's found in .CMS 2.2 and above. There did exist the OSGI, or as we've called them, dynamic plugin tooling. Prior to 2.2, it started in version 2, but .CMS has added a lot of functionality and features in 2.2 moving forward, uh, and you'll see more and more coming up. So this, review, this overview is going to uh, pick up with the functionality starting in version 2.2. Just to give you an idea, uh, this is built using OSGI. Uh, the main idea here is to be the ability to be able to deploy plugin code, Java code, without needing to restart the server. And in addition, we've tied in some really, really good libraries, things like Spring, where you can use Spring MVC, uh, even things like servlets filters, just basic Java web tooling. On top of that, velocity and .cms, very, very important. You can deploy view tools. Even classes that are very .cms specific, needing to extend .cms, like hooks, uh, co content hooks, as well as actionlets, which are the customizable classes or customizable pieces of workflow. Say you wanted to have a, a Twitter push or a Facebook push, or, or anything you could imagine, some custom functionality uh, right from the workflow. We call those actionlets. Those can also be deployed uh, via this OSGI framework. Now, we call this stuff dynamic plugins, meaning the old plugins or static plugins. They're still supported. They're not going anywhere. They're going to be around. This just provides a newer and uh, really a, a much cooler and more slick way than the static plugins did in that they're dynamic and can be deployed right on the fly without needing to restart the server. So let's jump in and see what we got. We ship, as you can see here, I'm just looking at the GitHub, and under your .cms install, you have docs, examples, OSGI, and these are these are just examples of what you can do. And we gave a bunch of little uh, examples for each piece. Now, many of these examples could be combined together, uh, meaning we broke them out so you could see them in their simplest form, but there's no reason you couldn't have had a servlet and a spring and a view tool all sitting in one plug. And it's really up to you, but these are, again, more of a guideline example or think of them as like a skeletal piece or skeleton that you can copy and then start working on your own. I'll just give you a brief overview of what each of these do. Uh, the third party, this is, I have a lot library that I want to include. So this is just giving you an example of dropping a jar inside the OSGI package and then using it. The actionlet, that's our workflow. Uh, the fragment, this is an OSGI term. It, it means this is what you do when you want to, the, you want to expose some classes to other OSGI jar. So it is kind of like a shared library kind of idea. In OSGI, it's very, it, it actually runs in a separate class path. That means that the normal classes or libraries that you'd have access to in .cms, you actually have to explicitly declare everything. Now, we, exp we declare a bunch of them right out of the box, but you may need some that we don't declare for you. So this fragment gives you a way of saying, well, I need access to this Java class and I, I don't have it. So this fragment gives you a way of exposing it to all the rest of the OSGI packages. Hooks, these are the .cms content hooks. Override for overriding a .cms class or something on our class path. The service is very, it's similar to one of the ones we've already talked about, but again, it's the idea of taking a class um, in making it available or shared in, in other, uh, where the fragment maybe doesn't even have its own class. It can just expose ones that are already in the .cms class path. The service actually has its own class that it then exposes to other packages. The servlet, it's a Java servlet spring. This is using spring MVC, integrating with .cms and velocity and so forth, and then the view tool is a view tool. So let's jump in, deploy one of these guys, and take a look. So if you log into your .cms, you can see as I do here, there's I'm on the dynamic plugins portlet. 
or tool. And you can see here there's two that are kind of just deployed by default in the out of the box start or install. I'm going to go ahead and deploy my own and let's just see one in action. So where I am right now on my command line is I am under docs examples OSGI. And I'm going to change directory into the service. Now the reason I'm using the service is I want to build the servlet, but the service actually the servlet actually depends on the servlet. So I'm going to run just ant right here. Ant is we just have our we ship these examples of a little build scripts meant to be run from right here. And you can see it created this jar for me. So I'm going to copy this right here. I'm going to go here. This is the root of my .cms install. I'm going to do a cp, copy this file to .cms, webimp, felix, and then the load directory. This is where you can place these guys. Now this is going to automatically deploy. In fact, you can see that here in my console. It's, it, it gave me a few debug messages, and it deployed it. In fact, we can refresh right here, and you see, ah, oh, it's active. That's good. That's what we want. We want it to be active. Now, I could have loaded the plugin right here. I could have uploaded it and browsed it. So even in the UI, I could have uploaded this. It's the same thing, whether you drop it in the load directory or upload from here. So this is good. I'm going to do a second build now, and I'm going to now come here, because this guy doesn't really have anything in it. It's just has some dependencies that the servlet is going to use. And I'm going to come here to the servlet and I'm going to run AMP. Great. I see that this built. I'm going to do the same thing. In fact, this time I'll tell you what. I'm going to go to jar my build jar bundle. I'm going to just browse for them and upload them for 30 UI so that you could see that. I'm going to go here to OSGI, servlet. All right, and here's my jar. I'm going to upload. We'll give it a few seconds here. There you can see it just deployed everything for me. And what I'm going to do now is go to my browser, and you can see it refreshed here. Here's my servlet. But I'm going to go to my browser, and I'm going to actually hit a URL now. This URL, you can see I'm, I'm refreshing him. Is and we got a little logging here hitting a filter because this servlet example actually has a, both a filter and a servlet in it. And let me show you these guys actually in action, what the code actually looks like. Now you see in the screen it's just spitting out hello world and on the, the filter is just logging out the URL I hit, but this is actually correct. This is what we told it to do. So let me show you the servlet. So I'm browsing in here. We're opening up the job, and here you can see it's spitting out Hello World, which is exactly what it should do. We're just doing a service.hello here, and actually this service class is the one we deployed before, and all he does is spit out Hello World, and we have our little basic HTML, which is what spit out on the screen. Now the filter is that it's hitting is the test filter here. And again, it's not doing anything that exciting. You could see all it does is write out test filter uh, here in the in the path, the filter or filter filter request, and then the path, and that's what we see here. Okay, so we can see that we the, we have both of a filter running and a servlet running. Now, how do these guys map? Let me show you that. As you can see in the URL, I had to go to slash app and then hello world. That's actually the key. The stuff I put after it was unnecessary, uh, but all of it makes it there. So if we look at the activator here, now every OSGI package has an activator. And the activator is kind of how you wire together this stuff. It's how you instruct when, when the OSGI package deploys, what do I do? Well, in the servlet example here, you could see we registered our servlet slash hello world. And then we told it what the servlet was. We gave it the class. That's the class we were just looking at. OK, 
Okay, and you see that here. There's a few more context and uh, dictionary and stuff you could pass in, but typically not necessary. Okay, as you can see, we did null and null here. In addition to that, I registered the filter. Very, very similar. There's that test filter, and we gave it a path as well on what to hit. This is how this stuff works. Also, we put in an exclude for the CMS filter, and anyone who's done any development in .CMS, you know what this is. The CMS filter is kind of the main filter that controls .CMS, and anytime you deploy your own servlet, you don't want our stuff in the way thinking that you're on a velocity page, so you want to exclude it, so we provide a way of doing that. All here in the activator, this is the whole wiring, and really what you just saw in the servlet, this is the whole thing all put together, a filter, a servlet, this is the wiring to him. Now, you saw that I went to slash app. We have this mapped in our web XML. So if you opened up uh, .CMS's web XML, I'm going to refresh right here. And we let's do a search for proxy, because I know that's its name. You could see here we map together our proxy to slash app. So basically the filters, the servlets, all of it gets mapped through this proxy. You could change this if you wanted and not be slash app. That's kind of standard, so that's what we chose to use. But once you get the slash app, anything you deploy, slash hello world, slash your custom path that you want, it's always going to be slash app, slash whatever it is that you define here. So we see a filter working and a servlet. This can be done on the fly. You can, you can deploy new ones, change them without any restart. Very, very cool. In very similar fashion, let me show you the spring example. So I'm going to back up here, and I'm going to go to com.cms spring. And I'm going to run ant. Same thing we did before. We now have our jar. I'm going to just deploy it real quick, just like we did before. Now I'm going to copy the spring jar right here into the same directory. We're going to see it load. There it is. This is good. And let me show you uh, the spring class that we have. So again, I'm going to turn here to my code. I'm going to open up Spring. Now here you can see we actually have, I'm going to close the other tabs here, but you can see we have a very basic Spring XML. And it's wiring together. We actually ship with a dot .view resolver, so this solves uh, your, your basically velocity code. How do you integrate this so that the view is a dot .cms page? And all the, the root of that it's always going to be all your pages will be under slash application slash spring. And the rest is, is mapped together here through annotations. Okay, so let's go take a look at our spring controller. So here is the example controller. And you can see I can hit slash or slash username. In addition to that, it's at slash example controller. Now let's open up our activator. Now he's wired together in a similar way that the servlet was. One, you could see here we get a dispatch servlet. We that we can we pass it in our XML. So this is an instance of the dispatch servlet. And then we map it to slash spring. But remember, everything slash app. So now we're on slash app slash spring. So what I'm going to do here is go to my URL. I'm going to go to localhost slash app slash spring slash, and then remember, we need to then look at what we mapped. We mapped example controller. And I'm actually missing. I need the final slash here. And I'm logged in, so it took me into edit mode. But here you can see we're hitting our page. Hello World Spring 3.1. Now, if we take a look at our example controller, that's what it's spitting out. And in fact, 
we have that sitting here on our page in a widget. We're basically spitting out message on this .cms page. Okay, and here you can see in the model view we return message and we go to hello world because that page lives under application slash spring and then we created a page called hello world. You can see that if I back up here application spring hello world. That's the page we were just on. So if we go back and hit this Here you could see now we hit our controller because we passed in the right path and it returns. And it's all based on the mappings. It's all controlled through annotations. Very, very slick. And you could do this, of course, for forms and all kinds of things. In addition to this, again, we have examples here for third-party libraries, the action lists, the hooks. You can do view tools here. Uh, the, the, the fragment, which exposes other classes that maybe we haven't exposed out of the box for you. That might be on the .cms class path. But there's lots and lots of functionality here. Very, very cool stuff. And uh, we hope you enjoy.